So, that's bare flesh. I am wearing shorts. If you saw my houseplant tour video, you'll know all about Steve, the friendly pigeon who I fed once and he never left. Must have been some real good bird seed, like the McFlurry of seed, because he's just stuck around since then. He mainly enjoys chilling on the wall, aggressively cooing at me through the window, and causes me immense guilt every time it rains. Let me in, bitch. At one point he became so confident he tried to move in. What are you doing? You are on the wrong side of the glass. <laughs> Oh no, oh no. That looked a bit traumatizing, but he was totally fine. This was all fun and games until one day I got a tweet from uh, Reed is doodling on Twitter, obviously on Twitter, <laughs> where else they're gonna send a tweet. And they said, please help Steve, his foot is injured and he might get sick. Ruh -roh. I tried to get a closer look at him, but he's been following social distancing rules better than most people I've seen on Instagram. He likes to keep a one to two meter distance and so should you. Uh, I finally got a good look while distracting him with a mountain of seed and it looked like he had something tied around his foot. Claw? Feet? They have feet? Pigeons have feet. Feet. I googled it and apparently if it doesn't get treated the entire foot can fall off because they can't tend to it with their little beaks and uh, then they'll die and then other birds might eat the foot. Gross. Anyway, Steve was in peril. I, I, I didn't need a moral obligation to save a pigeon, but I had it. This was my responsibility. No one else was gonna do anything. So I had to save Steve. The first thing I did was call the RSPCA, the Royal Society for the Protection of Cool Animals. <laughs> I don't know what it stands for. It's basically the main animal charity in the UK. However, their automated phone line was just like, we're so busy. We've got so many Corona puppies. A dog is for life, not just for a pandemic people. They could only help if it was an emergency. Was this an emergency? I didn't know. I mean, <laughs> it's a pigeon. It's a wild feral bird. It's not a baby horse trapped in an active volcano. So I decided to email them just to make sure what an emergency is. So I was expecting them to be like, nah mate, but I immediately got a reply. Yes, this is an emergency. Call us right now. So I gave him a call. Firstly, <laughs> I said that my name was Steve. Steve. Oh, my name. <laughs> I thought, you meant, <laughs> thought you meant the pigeon's name. And I explained the intense emergency situation. Like his foot, I think there's something around it, like a wire. They gave him an official emergency pigeon incident number, which <laughs> it's not a sentence I thought I'd say. And they said they do have officers that might be able to help out, but it'd be better if I could catch the pigeon myself and take him to a local vet. How, how the hell do you catch a pigeon? I googled it. One method is to like, <laughs> throw a blanket or a coat or something over the pigeon so he doesn't get a chance to fly away. But I figured this might be super traumatizing, so I didn't want to scare him off and then never see him again. The other method would be to do some kind of Looney Tunes style stick and box trap, but then you've got the stress of trying to get the pigeon from out under the box safely. The option I decided was to buy a mini pet carrier and then like an evil psychologist, or I guess a nice animal psychologist, to Pavlovianly train Steve to voluntarily want to go inside the box and then he wouldn't hate me like I committed some kind of grand pigeon betrayal. Inside I've put a towel so he's comfy and also I'm gonna put some seeds right at the back so I think this might scare him so we're gonna have to think of a way for that not to happen. At first he fully hated the box. As soon as I opened the window and he saw the box he flew away so <laughs> this might be a long process of teaching him this is a friend. Just a perfectly innocent box of snacks with a big metal door. Wait, who the F are you? Pause, wait. Suddenly Steve had a girlfriend. I'm pretty sure this was a girl as loads of other pigeons came along and tried to do a puffed up pigeon male dance around her. And she was like, piss you, I want Steve. I named her Scraggy, which <laughs> means ragged or untidy in form or appearance because well, and they've been cleaning each other's feathers and sharing food, cute. But this posed, posed a problem <laughs> because I didn't want to catch Scraggy too. So I tried to only train him while he was alone. So the plan was to catch him, but then I also had to release him back in the same place so his bird wife wouldn't be like, when will my husband return from the war? So the training began. Over the next couple of weeks, I only fed Steve and occasionally Scraggy too by only throwing seed into the back of the box. Yes, the smell of the food is too strong. No, 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 no scare. And slowly but surely, he started to go in. <gasps> He's in. Oh my God. So if I can get closer. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> He's too clever. During this time of trying to get Steve to go in the box, I'd emailed about four local vets saying, hello, pigeon emergency, please help. Two didn't reply 
and one was exceptionally rude. Most vets do not have a duty of care to treat wild animals. This lies with the Wildlife Trust and the RSPCA. Hope this clears it up. The capital letters really helped. Kind regards, Paul. Do I need to get Larry? Why'd you hate Steve so much, Paul? Who hurt you, Paul? Thankfully, I did get a friendly reply from one vet. Good morning, sorry for the delay. Do you still have the pigeon and you need someone to take a look at it? Please, take my pigeon. So I emailed them twice back, but then they started to ghost me. So I plucked up the courage and decided to make another actual phone call. I was just wondering if there's any chance I could bring him in and you could remove some string around his foot. Because he's limping and he seems sad. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes. Oh, that'd be amazing. We have a vet. Steve's going to be saved. Oh, that is such good news. Now we just have to try and get him in a box between 12 and 3 on Wednesday. So I had to hope he would specifically be on my balcony on Wednesday morning and he would voluntarily go in the box and then I could trap him. No pressure. Back to the box. Training had gone super well, but he would still run away every time I went to the door to close it. So it's clear for this plan to work. I had to do more to this plan, but... I'd run out of time. Wednesday morning. No Steve to be seen, of course. Steve. Now's your time. Couple of hours later, praise Jesus and the pigeon gods, Steve showed up. <sighs> it was then I had the galaxy brain idea. I'm gonna tie this phone charger around the cage box and then should be able to pull it closed. So the plan was, Dan would pull the string cable while trying to record the action, and I would run over, close the cage, and try not to get my fingers pecked off. It was now or never. We have one shot. If we F this up, Steve would never come back to the balcony. This was the only chance we were gonna get to save him. It was time. No. Go. It worked! We had Steve. Sorry, Steve. We're going to rescue you. Your friend will be back soon. She just patiently waited outside. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> She's not a meerkat now. And she waited as if Steve had been invited into our apartment for some kind of exclusive seed party or something. Now all I had to do is walk 10 minutes down the road with a wild pigeon inside a box, which is probably the most weird or suspicious thing someone could be doing on a Wednesday afternoon. And also not walk into a lamppost where I'd accidentally release the pigeon into an oncoming bus. Here's my pigeon walking outfit. Steve, it's your first time in a lift. How do you feel? He's actually quite chill now that he's in the box. Mainly because I'd filled it with bird seed, like some kind of Hansel and Gretel situation without me being a child eating witch. The trek began to the vet and for some reason on that day, London was an actual obstacle course. We had people carrying ladders across the pavement, honking bikes, honking people. There was just a whole lot of honking. This time last year, if you asked me what I was gonna be doing now, I wouldn't think I'd be wearing this mask while taking a pigeon called Steve. The vet. Steve was generally fine. There was a few aggressive coups like oh, oh, and Dan had to stop me walking pigeon first into an old woman. But apart from that, we were all right. I got to the vet who was taking social distancing very seriously, almost as if medical professionals think that we should be social distancing and wearing masks. Who knew? I gave them Steve and they said that they could remove the string and he would probably be fine. I didn't like this probably, but they said they'd call me when they had an update. Apparently it's quite unusual for someone to bring in a wild pigeon. The wait began. Would my son be okay? Steve's been at the vet for about two hours and they said they'd call me, but I just got a voicemail. I feel like I'm scared they're gonna say like his wings fell off, so we have to put him to sleep or something. Um, it's only 30 seconds, so I feel like if it was sad news, it would be like a minute. Because you're not going to say, he died, and then hang up in 30 seconds. Anyway, right, we're going to listen. Steve, be okay. I'm just calling you to, just let you know that the pigeon that you brought into us is uh, all done. He's alright. So yes! Get the string off, uh, off his foot. He did have to lose a toe, unfortunately, but... No. Um, they're done, so that's very quickly. Thank Steve's okay! Fireworks! <laughs> Celebration effects! More fireworks! I guess he had to lose a toe for whatever was wrong with his foot but she said he's fine. I think I wanna go get him now. So let's go. So we immediately returned to pick up Steve. Steve! He's healed. Are you okay, Steve? He's quite chill. They gave him some bread. Bread? Yeah. We don't even give him bread. I know, what a treat. It's like he's gone to a five-star restaurant. So Steve is healed. Sadly, he lost a toe in the process. Apparently it had already lost all circulation, so they just had to remove it. But apparently pigeons are fine with that and they can go on 
with four toes instead of how many toes they got. It's okay, Steve, we're nearly home. I got Steve home to release him exactly where I caught him. This was the moment I was just so worried that Steve would never forgive me and he'd fly away forever. I've got some seed, which I'm gonna put on the feeder. He'll be like, ah, treat, home, I'm not stressed. You are free. Yes. Straight for food. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he'd be scared of me, but he's just like, food. And he sat down with Scraggy as if nothing had happened. Not that he'd been abducted into a weird dark food box or brought across London by two giants and put in a strange room where his toe fell off. Nah, he was fine if he just had some seed. We should all take some inspiration about how chill Steve was. A week later and his foot is way better. He's standing, he's trying to mount Scraggy. I'll save you the clip of that. Don't get demonetized. They've also been picking random twigs off the floor and flying off with them, so maybe they even have a nest. Baby Steve's. And the most interesting thing I did this summer during a global pandemic was <laughs> try to rehabilitate a wild pigeon. Just fill things. Thanks to Reed, the pigeon expert, for suggesting that I save Steve and also to the kind vet and the charity people. I'm quite emotionally attached to this bird now. We definitely have a relationship where he knows this is a safe territory to hang out. And as long as he stares at me for hours and aggressively coos, I'll feed him. I think I'll start weaning him off the seed a little bit now though, so he knows to <laughs> forage for food without me. Please give me a thumbs up if you're happy Steve survived. And I'll put some links around my face where you can subscribe or visit my shop or watch my last video where I tell you some awkward closeted moments. Uh, so if you want to do any of that, click away. I hope you're doing well and I will say goodbye to you in pigeon.